And now it's time for Royal Photo Wars. The Duke and Duchess of Montecito have added fuel to the fire that's embroiling the Princess of Wales' edited family photo. Sources close to the couple say Meghan's too perfect to have made the same mistake. And this is despite the fact that they edited their own official photo to include an enormous willow tree uh, from which you get wood, from which, of course, you make planks. Um, it's a ridiculous storm in a teacup. It's still going on. Now, days later, we're arguing about whether or not people use Photoshop, whether it should be used. I still maintain that it was a very strange thing that happened. Let's talk now to a proper expert, though, the Royal Editor, Mr Robert Jobson. Robert, very good evening to you. Welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. I mean, I'm, I'm like you, I think, um, pretty fed up with all of the people making all sorts of ridiculous stories up about why this has happened. But I still ask the one question that hasn't been answered by anyone. How was it allowed to happen? How did it... How was somebody in Kensington Palace let it happen? I think everyone was moving too quickly. I think everyone was trying to please the principals without necessarily doing the correct checks. And it was at a weekend. It was a mistake, a genuine mistake by her. But I would have thought Catherine would have known better. You know, she's, she's an amateur photographer. She knows that tweaking and messing around with photographs can lead to people losing their jobs. So I think that doing it was a bit silly. But once it's done, you know, and she's owned up to it, I think we should probably move on. Obviously, the, the, Mon the Duke and Duchess of Montecito don't necessarily want us to move on because it's a, a negative on, on Kate's copybook. But my feeling is it's, she's owned up to it. It's, it's a mistake. It shouldn't have happened. I mean, the thing is, though, it is straight. I mean, the bottom line, you do have to. Remember that, you know, it is a question of integrity. It's not, and no one's having to go at her personally, but the institution should not have allowed this to happen because, you know, you do have to trust what's coming out of a, pal a palace. If it's releasing official photographs, you have to trust it. And you do have to be able to trust the information. So I think it was a mistake that was made. And, um, and it does call into question the integrity of the palace, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you and I, I'm afraid, are old enough to remember, you know, some of the proper, not scandals perhaps so much, but certainly sort of royal gaffes all the way back to Prince Edward and it's a royal knockout, all the way back to Fergie and the toe-sucking, you know, Squidgy Gate, you know, all of the stuff that happened when Princess Diana was, was around giving leaks to newspapers and pretending she hadn't spoken to them. I mean, you know, the royal family have got quite a long history of uh, being, shall we say, economical with the truth at, at times when it suits them. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's fair. I, mean, I think one of them was Prince Edward's wedding that Prince William looked quite grumpy, so they took his head off and put a picture of him smiling. Um, so, and that made page leads at the time, because even then it was seen as ridiculous. But in this day and age of AI, with so much going on, I'm sure you've seen all the memes, you know, with John Terry yeah. appearing on in the back of the, uh, the pictures and others of this picture holding the European Cup. You know, there's, then it's, it's become slightly farcical, and... The, the, on a more serious issue, you know, these things in a hundred years' time, but pictures that are released by the palace are, are historical. And, yeah. you know, this guy who's standing on behind his mum one day will be the king. And you can't really doctor photographs like that. It's not no. It's not great. The thing that's slightly weird is they do have um, Andrew Parsons, who is, a, you know, who's one of, was Boris, who used to work with the Prime Minister, actually, Boris Johnson and other Prime Ministers, working with them. Yeah. So I don't know why they didn't just let, you know, perfect, you know, let, Andrew, take the picture. Mm. I mean, if you want a wall built, you, you get a bricklayer. If you yeah. want a phot photograph taken, <laughs> get a professional photographer. It's as simple as that. Well, that's yeah. right. And also, if they'd, want, if they'd wanted it to be released, you know, as it was kind of altered, surely they could have just put it out on their own Twitter account and they wouldn't have had to send it via a news agency. And in that way, they wouldn't have had to be scrutinised in the same kind of way because they, they happen to have rules where they're not allowed to run, you know, Photoshop pictures. Well, I mean, there are different. I mean, I think the thing is, though, that we are being run in a bit of a woke world at the moment because mm. in America they have different rules. You know, Reuters, AP, and these agencies, uh, AFP, and all these other agencies, you know, which are really effectively run by Getty, run by American Americans, have got different rules than they would necessarily over, have over here. Th these rules have clearly been breached. The rules that would have over here, but at the same time, I do think that it was Sunday that this happened. It's been now like an international story, it seems, right. for, for the White House sort of weighing in and saying, we'd never do it. You know, it does seem <laughs> a little over the top. But, um, and I feel sorry for 
okay, actually, because I'm sure actually all she was trying to do was put out the best picture possible. Oh, yeah. Now and listen, people don't are plenty of people whether the picture was right. Yeah, and there are plenty of people in this country who think that there's no reason why we should even be going on about it, even now, even still. You know, but of course, the other thing about the American market is that, you know, again, you and I have been around long enough to know that before social media, some of the American tabloids like the National Enquirer and the Star in those days used yeah. to write some horrific stories about Chuck and yeah, Die, right. you know, Chuck and Die screaming match, you yeah. know, and you'd read them and you'd be going, what the hell are they talking about? You know, where are they getting this from? And they were literally just making one. it up. I missed another one. Right, right. We're just making it up. And I think that in this day and age with AI, it's frightening. You know, you see, you see online, you see people um, you know, giving, now William giving a speech, it's his voice and saying all sorts of ridiculous things. So integrity and trust and honesty and authenticity do matter when they're coming out of government or palace um, institutions. Because otherwise, what are the public supposed to believe? We've got an election coming up. I'm sure AI is going to play an, a, a part in that. Because people don't believe what they see at the best of times, you know. Mm. But, you know, you do expect official photographs released through an official medium not to be doctored, and sadly it was doctored in this case. Yeah. So, I mean, in the end, it's been not a bad week for uh, Meghan Markle. I mean, I know it's only Wednesday, but, you know, she won a lawsuit against her, uh, her sister, Samantha, and um, or her half-sister, Samantha, um, and now she's sort of come out of this looking like um, she's not in the wrong, which is always a good week, I guess, for her. Well, I mean, there was that photograph as it was released. Um, I think the photographer has gone a bit a bit mad about somebody saying about this tree in the background. I right. think Tom Bauer said it was, uh, and he's now saying the tree was always in the background. It wasn't fake, even though I think he said on BBC that it was. Well, I, read, <laughs> um, I read an interview with it was with a him. colour photograph and he's turned it to a yeah. black and white photograph. Right. I mean, well, you know... At the end of the day, they fiddle with photographs as well, so yeah. I don't think they should really enter the debate. No, they shouldn't. No, I read an interview that he had done at the time of the picture coming out, well, in, which, not, well, in which not only he said that the picture had been tampered with, but that he wasn't even there when the picture was taken, because it was taken remotely. He was in Europe, and they were there, and he put the tree in in the background afterwards, and it was the tree of love or some absolute crap, you know. Right. But basically... Well, he's now saying that's not... He's now saying that's not the case. He's <laughs> producing negatives and he's saying, what is he saying? That, you know, but this, again, Mike, this is his truth. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, that's the, other, that's the other great get out clause now, the one that we'll all <laughs> have to use at some point or other in our career and go, well, it was my truth and I'm sticking to it. I'm not having a new having to go at me. Yeah, I mean, I do feel sorry for Kate. And I think that, and everyone's having to go out the PR department of Buckingham, you know, Kensington Palace. So I can, I can see why, but you know, this is what's happened now. I think everybody is demanding things so quickly. Um, the reality is that they put that on, on their website, you know, on their Instagram page, and then issued it to the press, not thinking they were going to undergo go the same level of scrutiny. But you know, I think that they know, you know, they're the heir to the, you know, they're the future king and queen. Maybe they're just going to have to slow things down. I mean, I heard the other day. That the king had had a whole all of these official photographs taken of him in his uniform, you know, yeah. of his uniforms, official uniforms. These are very important historical pictures. Didn't like them, said so them all redone and repaid for the whole lot, you know, with the with the lighting and everything, yeah. because he had to get it absolutely right. Well, I think actually there's a degree of um, when you're dealing with this level of history and you know, people are going to be looking at these things in a thousand years. You don't want to be looking at dodgy photograph, dodgy <laughs> photographs. You want to be looking at the real McCoy, don't you? No, exactly right. And speaking of the real McCoy, uh, ladies day at Cheltenham today, although they're trying to reclaim it and call it um, Style Wednesday. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. Uh, the Queen was there. Uh, lots of pictures of her doing the rounds. Um, this is in the sun tomorrow. And they're off. Uh, a very nice green number. I remember um, you and I once attending the, um, the Derby in Epsom, uh, where you mostly did all the work and I did all the drinking. That, that doesn't surprise me. And I remember in those <laughs> days, there was always a press tent. There was a press tent where I think Mr. Mike Parry was uh, spent most of the time. With, he did, yeah. He was carried um, out of it on yeah. a stretcher at one point, I think. <laughs> That's right. And there were all sorts of shouting and things going on. But it was a different time then, you know. Yeah. We would we, all be holed up. But, yeah, the Queen, the thing is, though, with this, is the Queen, of course, is taking the lead in so many things. You know, I'm, I'm sure that um, you know, years ago, we, we couldn't have possibly imagined this. But, no. you know, there she is, the Queen leading the royal family at... Westminster Abbey, now she's here at, at Cheltenham, but she's there representing the king. Of course, the king's is still um, undergoing his treatment at, um, you know, he's undergoing his, his cancer treatment, and I don't think we're really going to see a lot of him apart from 
photographs that are released by the palace, and there will be legitimate photographs of him meeting the prime minister or ambassadors, etc. But I think she's doing a sterling job, um, Camilla. And, yeah. Uh, I think the Queen, you know, she, I know they everyone had a go because she had a short holiday. Well, she's 76. I think she's entitled to holiday now and again. You know? Yes. Yeah, absolutely right. And, I mean, it hasn't been a great start to the year for, for any of them, really, has it? And so I guess things can only get better, as they used to say in Tony Blair's government. Yeah, well, let's hope so. I mean, obviously, the, the King has got uh, his treatment undergoing and, the, and you've got Kate um, undergoing her... Uh, recovery. I'm sure that that will go well. Let's hope for you. Fingers crossed everything goes well for the King. He's, I think he's carrying out his constitutional duties as much as he can. And obviously he can't go to big public gatherings. You know, the, he, I'm sure his immune system's down. Right. And so they, they have to take care with him. But, you know, he's, a, he's he'll be getting frustrated and I'm sure we'll be desperate to get back yeah. uh, to work as soon as he's fit well enough to do so. And do you think we'll see Harry and Meghan ever in this uh, realm particularly again? Again, yeah. I do, but not necessarily for happy events, but I do think we will see them again, yeah. Right, OK. Well, we're not going to say we look forward to it, but we shall see.